Chad Hart, and I work with uh, Canoe Kentucky. We're, uh, we're about an hour away from here. Um, so we do some rentals, we do uh, kayak rentals, we do uh, rafting, guided fishing trips. So uh, we do a little bit of everything down there. Um, kind of start things off, uh, who is, who's ever kayaked before? Has anybody kayak? Awesome. Um, let me tell you, it is an extremely growing sport right now. It's, uh, uh, it started coming out about uh, five years ago. They started coming out with the, uh, one of the fishing kayaks and uh, started about five years ago. Uh, gentlemen started making some kayaks uh, and they said, let's just tack this into fishing. So uh, they started making some of these boats specifically for fishing boats. These are almost considered small bass boats. No, they've, they've really making these boats like small little bass boats. They're, uh, they're amazing where you can put them in some of the smaller lakes and rivers and streams. Um, back about 10 years ago, I was back into the, uh, big into the bass fishing as far as the big boats. And uh, I love the uh, tournaments. I love shooting up and down the lakes. And uh, at that point, that's all I did. And everybody kept telling me, saying, man, you need to try this kayak fishing. And I said, why do I want to do that? I've got this boat that will go 70 plus miles down the, down the lake. Why do I want this little kayak? So uh, finally, finally got into it. And I thought, man, I was going out on the stream and catching 40, 50 smallies. I said, this is all right. So uh, after that, I pretty much sold my bass boat. And uh, this is all I do. I, I, so I go, go out and just chase uh, smallmouth, largemouth, catfish and uh, just on a kayak. It's just a really, really fun adventure. Uh, gotten the whole family involved in it. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really a fun sport. Um, now, what I'm gonna talk about, we loved getting people talking about it and love people getting in the water. And this is for lakes, rivers, anything. The main thing is safety. We wanna make sure that everybody has a fun time, has a good time on these boats, but we also kind of really try to push safety on these, on these kayaks. because. Being that they are very, very wide and very, very stable, you always got to be prepared for anything. So uh, uh, the main thing I can talk to you about on any boat, but especially a kayak, is this right here. It's PFD. Always, always wear this. This is always a crucial thing that saves lives um, because you never know what's going to happen. I've, me personally, I've, as much as I've been out on the kayak, Sometimes I'll get excited, sometimes I'll set that hook a little too hard, and sometimes I'll go flying right out of that boat. So that's why I always just keep that life jacket on. Um, does anybody know about the, uh, with the water temperature and the air temperature? Does anybody know where that safe level is as far as uh, uh, herpothermia and all that? It's a 110. So what we do, we tell people you take the air temperature and take the water temperature and plus them together, okay? As long as it is at 110 or above, you're safe. As long as it's 110 or below, you're gonna have to have a dry suit, wet suit, properly clothed because you don't wanna go into shock and all that. Um, if anybody does accidentally fall out of any boat, any vessel, when it's cold, the best thing to do is just try to change clothes, try to warm up, and, uh, and that's where this life jacket comes in handy. If you're wearing this, you won't have to worry about going into shock and all that, okay? All right, uh, now what I'm gonna talk to you about is the kind of rigging some of these boats up, okay? Um, this particular one, this, when they came out with this boat, this is a brand new boat this year. This company wanted to have a pedal drive boat you could actually put on a creek. A lot of the pedal drive boats out there, you can put on the creek, but you gotta physically pull that pedal drive up from the boat, okay? So this company came out with this particular model, and what this does, I'm not sure if anyone, all y'all can see, that pedal drive is down here below, okay? And uh, you're just basically pedaling it like a bicycle. That's all you're doing. This right here is what steers it. This is your rudder system. Um, now, if you're coming up on a log, or if you're coming up on the bank, what this is designed to do, as you can see, as soon as this hits something, pops right up automatically. So uh, this is one of the, probably the most perfect creek uh, river stream kayaks on the market right now, just for that reason right there, where you don't have to physically pull that pedal drive system up. Um, they've got track system all on the side, and also for your rod holders, if everybody, if you go under rammount.com, 
They've got countless accessories you can put on these things. I've told people that uh, you can really dress them up, but what I like to do when I go out there fishing, I like to try to keep things basic, simple, because I don't want a whole lot of gear on this boat because a chance of breaking stuff and uh, losing stuff. So I just like to usually put one rod holder and usually a cup holder. But you can put fish finders, you can put depth finders, you can put anything you want on these things. Um, this particular one is uh, 13 foot, and I've literally stood on this boat, on the side of this boat, and it will not flip over. It's uh, extremely sturdy, uh, stable, and, um, and they made that for that reason. They wanted to make sure that everybody was safe, but they also wanted to make sure that you can move around the boat, stand up if you choose to, and, uh, and all that. Um, it's got your high low seat. This is what sells any kayak on the market. I don't care what boat it is. If you don't have a comfortable seat, you're not gonna wanna stay in that boat very long. So this, uh, they really went beyond the limits to get this boat with this seat. It's got a really a good lumbar support system. And I've stayed out on these boats for eight, nine hours plus, and still at the end of the day, be perfectly fine. Um, you can adjust it down in the low position which means it's kind of like a standard kayak. And then plus, if you adjust it up in the high position, that feels a little bit more comfortable on your knees and legs. It's got tons of storage, especially if uh, you're going out camping, uh, overnight trips, you can store all your stuff. I've gone, literally I've gone uh, two weeks on, uh, on some rivers, camping on the side and just store all my gear in these kayaks and does perfectly fine. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, any questions on, on this particular boat? Anything good? This one's about right at about $32.99. Uh, you can get this same exact boat uh, without the pedal drive for about $19.99. Uh, so if you're not wanting to do the pedal drive, uh, you can add that pedal drive later if you choose to. Uh, but that's about $19.99 for just the boat. Yeah. Um, any other questions on the boat or safety? And like I said, the main thing is we want to make sure everybody has fun on these things, but we also want to make sure everybody stays safe. And uh, uh, if you guys ever need anything from us, we're, like I said, Canoe Kentucky, and uh, we'll be more than glad to help you, walk you through some stuff. We can do training classes. We got tons of camps involved with us, uh, fishing camps and, uh, and all that. But, uh, but yeah, this is Alex right here. I'm gonna uh, kind of sit, let him step in. He's more of the catfish and uh, kayaker, and uh, he'll talk to you a little bit about some of what he does and his business, and uh, some of maybe his tricks, what he does. All right, guys, thank y'all. Alex. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Alex. Sorry. No. <laughs> My name is Alex Kobus. I own and operate uh, Kobus Kayak Fishing and Rentals based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's a kayak fishing charter and a kayak rental company. Uh, and I live and breathe catfishing from my kayak. Uh, one of the main reasons I got into kayak fishing, I've catfished since I was a teenager. I love it, but sooner or later we all reach that point where it's like, I got to get off the bank. You know, you can only bank fish for so long. And I was looking at boats, you know, financing, all that. It was, it was too much, they always need repairs. Kayaks were the answer for me. So that's kind of how I got into it. Um, I was a little skeptical at first. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to land 60, 70 pound catfish from a kayak. And you know, you get on YouTube, I find out they're landing tarpon, marlin, all these absolutely insane fish. So I saw that and I was like, okay, sold. Um, but some of the rigging I do for it, 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 it is, it, it's a little different how you have to go about it. Um, there are a couple things, and these, these apply to all kayaks, not just this uh, specific model here. Um, but you'll kind of see these. A lot of our rigging here is set up on these gear tracks. Uh, basically, you have a little, I guess, a little mechanism that slides in between them, locks down, and sets it in place. They sell a ton of accessories, but a lot of them are these rod holders. Um, a lot of people think just because I'm on the kayak, you can't fish as many rods. Typically, when I go out by myself, I'm fishing four rods, you know. So guys on boats, they usually fish six. It, for something that's only 12 and a half, 13 feet, not that much of a difference just to drop two rods. Uh, but the gear tracks are your key, and you can move and adjust them. You can you know, set it kicking out that way. If you want to do suspend drift, you can kick them right off to the side. If you're anchored up and casting downstream, you can get it to where they're angled uh, to, to help your line just stay managed a little bit better. Um, another thing I use, it's known as a, what is it, trolley anchor? Tr trolling anchor, trolley anchor? Uh, either way, 
It is um, basically a big rope system on two pulleys. You get a pulley up in the front, a pulley up in the back. And then there's a little, you know, either a carabiner or just a circle or a loop, whatever. And you drop your anchor, you run your anchor line up through that, and you attach it to either wherever you may set your anchor point on your boat. But with that trolley anchor, what it allows you to do is adjust the pivot of how you're anchored throughout the day. And if you're stuck in wind or uh, just, you know, the, a place where the current kind of fluctuates throughout the day, it really helps uh, just kind of keep your line solid and keep them in a nice straight line. Um, Another question I get asked a lot, you know, they're like, dude, you're landing these big fish. It must be a crazy sleigh ride you get put on. It's not as bad as you think. It, it really isn't. I don't know how to explain it. But no, I mean, honestly, the, probably the, the largest one I've caught was right around 65 pounds. Um, and it didn't even pop my anchor. You know, I, I, I use a 10-pound dumbbell as an anchor. Very cost efficient. Uh, seems to work just great. It'll sit down in the mud but not get too caught up in it. Um, but... When I am bringing in these big fish, it is different than a boat. Um, I work my drag constantly. And the closer they get, the looser I have the drag. You don't want that big fish coming up on you and trying to run right under your boat with your drag maxed out. You know, will it flip the kayak? Don't think so. Will it flip you out of the kayak? Possibly. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you really have to work the drag and uh, stuff like that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think what else. Suspended drift fishing works great from kayaks. I think that is a great way. You can get it set up with a really big um, a drift sock. Uh, they make kayak specific ones. They're great. I like the companies that make them, but me personally, I get the same drift socks you guys get. I, I think I use, it's either 32, maybe a 36 inch diameter drift sock. Um, and with your trolley anchor, you, you can either you know, run it to the back so you're running front or whatever. You, know, you can change where your drift sock's gonna go. Um, but, but that seems to work really well. Um, as far as that goes. Dragging and stuff, I'm starting to get into a little bit more. Um, but as far as affordability goes, and you know, if, if you're at that point where you're sick of fishing from the bank all the time, and you see all those boats, I'm telling you guys, kayak fishing is an absolutely great way to get into it. Um, yeah, I, I, I was absolutely blown away. It was something when I first came into it, I was like, maybe I am crazy, I don't know, but I've been doing it for about three years now, and it, I love it. I wouldn't do it any other way. Um, there, there is no greater rush than seeing an absolute monstrous catfish and you're only separated from them by just a couple inches of your kayak, you know? Uh, oh, one other big thing I do, I never bring out a net. I do not bring a net. It, for some reason, it just doesn't work when you're by yourself, when you're kayak fishing. Um, it, you got to hold the rod like this and then you got to push it. And then these, the, the, these kayaks are very buoyant. They do move easily. As you start to try to net them, the resistance on the water from that net will actually start to push your kayak over. You know, it, it'll change the direction of it. So you're actually starting to push yourself away. So, uh, it, it, so uh, typically what I do, you know, I'll just kind of grab my rod here, do one of these. I do grab the line. A lot of people disagree with it. it seems to work just fine. <laughs> you know, I usually pinch my swivel. I'll pinch my swivel, and then you just grab them in the mouth, bring them up and over. Um, it, it's great, uh, yeah, so no net, uh, I think that's a real big difference. A lot of people seem really surprised about that. I get people constantly, they're like, you know, you should always bring a net, or like, don't, don't you lose them at the side of your boat? And I'm like, well, yeah, but don't we all, you know? Like, who hasn't lost a fish at the side of the boat, with or without a net, so. Um, and just like, uh, just like Alex was saying, that there is no bigger rush when you get a when you get a big fish on, I mean, I was I was down two two weeks ago. I was down in Louisiana red fishing, and uh, and when you get a big fish on a kayak, just that rush of them pulling that kayak around, moving around and chasing it. I fought I fought this one red red fish for 20, 25 minutes, and he was literally just dragging all over the place. And just that just that rush of that big fish from a kayak, and you get him up, and you're right there close to him. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah. And uh, kind of just to keep going back to the rush, um, I, this is one thing I do not like about kayak fishing. This isn't like a, a serious deter at all, but you are sitting, you are confined. On a boat, when you get that big fish, when you get that first big bite of the day, you can kind of pace it off, you can be excited. The hardest part about the kayak fishing is you're just sitting there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to, to can, contain the excitement. So I, I do catch myself doing a lot more of the yahoos and you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, it, it, I just, you know, 15 years ago, I don't think anybody would have ever seen 
kayaks no. or catfishing, really kind of transitioning towards this, no. but I, I'm sold. I, I, I yep. think it's the way. So. Can you just put that on a car? Uh, absolutely. So th there's a lot of options you can do. Um, they make roof racks. Okay, so when I first started, I drove, I was driving a 2002 Saturn Ion. I don't know how many people know what that is, but it's like a three cylinder car. <laughs> yeah, no, it just it could not be any smaller. My kayak was literally longer than my car when it was on top. But I was driving around, um, I just had some roof racks, and you know, I, I was committed. Now I've changed things a little bit. I've added a lot more equipment to my kayak. I have a different car. At this point, I have a little flatbed trailer and I treat my kayak just like a boat. But that's because it's I've kind of gotten lazy as I've gotten into it more, you know. But for the first year, year and a half, I was in that little Saturn Ion. You can get these little carts right here. These things are absolutely awesome. This is how you transport them a lot when you're bringing it down off your car. You set it down underneath there, and uh, you just find a natural pivot point for it, and it's not that bad. And um, it, it, if you're play, by a place that doesn't have a boat dock, you can easily just drag this through some brush, through you know, through the woods a little bit till you get to that sweet spot where you can launch. Um, yeah, and then, uh, so, let's see what else. I'm just trying to think what other, I mean. Does it have a drain hook? So, actually, yeah, the, Chad kind of touched on this, and I, I've joked about this a lot as well. Um, years ago, these I just knew these as ocean kayaks. And the reason they were called ocean kayaks is because you're paddling out in the ocean, and you would always get water that would spill over in. So all these kayaks you see like this that are they're called sit-on-tops now, I think is what they refer to mainly mm -hmm. as, they have what's known as uh, scupper plugs. And there's usually six to eight holes somewhere throughout it. You can put a little plug in it or you can leave it out, but they self-bail. So they're buoyant enough on their own, even if those plugs are out, if water does cat, you know, come rushing in, it drains back out. So, um, but it, it, even then, I mean, I've, I do a lot of lake fishing, uh, so you know a lot of open water. If it gets windy out there, it gets choppy quick. And th there have definitely been days where, you know, I I've been I've just been in chop, and the, the pleasure mm. boaters are out there. It gets rough, but you get a little bit of water in your boat. Ten minutes later, it's drained out and dry. You know. Is you, there you, safety floats in there that it's unsinkable? No. Uh, what it is, it's all it's all hollow, all all the way through the whole boat. So it's buoyancy pretty much the whole time. Um, it. This one, particular one, has got a 600 weight uh, capacity on it, so uh, 600 with uh, with yourself and gear. Um, the uh, but yeah, it, it you can't. It'd be hard to sink one. I mean. Well, I was thinking if you left the hatch open and turned it over, mm. the hatch opened up and it filled with water. Bye -bye. They've got what they've got, actually got. They've got foam blocks on each side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got foam. So if it does something happens. If it does fill up with water, it's not gonna, it's not gonna sink. No, sir. No, and, and I, I, I kind of made a mistake last summer, uh, fishing a little bit after dark. And I, th I think we've all been there, like, oh, just that one more cast, it's been a good spot. And um, I, I kind of got stuck in a, kind of a nasty thunderstorm mm -hmm. out on the middle of the lake. Not an enjoyable experience at all. I was definitely uh, absolutely terrified. But um, kind of the point of that is, I had tons of water coming over the top. And when I finally did make it back to the dock, uh, the inside of my kayak, because it does happen, and this is nothing against the, the product or manufacturer or anything, the inside of my kayak was probably a quarter of the way full with water. Um, and, but it was still buoyant enough. I, I didn't realize it at the time when I was out on the water, um, and it, it got me back just fine. Right, and the second I was like, oh my goodness, yeah, so. Um, and I mean, the rigging on these things is, is unlimited. I treat my kayak exactly like a boat. I have a fish finder. I've got my transducer mounted up underneath it so it sits directly under my seat. Um, right now, the, the biggest two, this is a pedal kayak. I have a paddle kayak. Um, but it, with a lot of the paddle kayaks you're seeing now, some of the manufacturers are actually just getting it set up to where the kayak is already preformed for you to just put an outboard or a trolling motor on it. Um, and then even if you bought a kayak that doesn't have that preform in it, companies left and right are making little brackets. So a lot of people are kind of moving towards putting trolling motors on them, putting outboards on them, and I mean, even with what, a little 35, 40 pound troller, yeah. I thought this thing would be skipping. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you could probably get one of these up to five or six miles an hour, no problem. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it, it, it's great. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's definitely, like I said, it's fun. It's a growing sport. It's a good sport for the uh, family, uh, get, the, get the kids involved in it. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of fun.
A lot of fun. Yeah. Any other questions? Any? Yeah. What you got? Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, I guarantee you, this particular boat, we can get you in this boat and uh, you would be amazed. You would be truly amazed. I put, when they first came out with this one, I put myself and uh, two other guys in this boat just to see what it'd do. And it didn't. We, I had one guy standing here, I was in the middle, and another guy was in the back, and it was still really stable. You would be, you will be amazed on how stable this one is. Any other questions? All, All right. right, everybody. Well, once again, my name is Alex Kobus. That is Kobus Kayak Fishing and Rentals down in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Look me up, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. If you guys are ever in the area, please give me a shout. Come on out and. Let me change your minds about getting some kayaks and changing the world and telling you it is the greatest way to catch catfish yet. So, absolutely. And appreciate uh, everybody coming out. Yep. All right. Well, that's that's good, good, man. That's yeah, good. man.